the uh, DPP has told us that he doesn't have to put his reasons in writing, um, despite all the arguments that you take. But one other interesting thing that came out from my interview with him is that there are pending charges. In fact, we hear that there is a 20 count charge that's been filed in Abuja. Do you have any further information to give us about that? What we have not seen, what we has not been served on us, to us is fiction. When we see it, we deal with it. But what is on ground today? is that the disrespect shown to the court by that disgraceful incident that all of you witnessed here on the 25th or so of uh, July or thereafter should not be left unattended to. And the court fixed today. I'm sure you've gone through the papers. And you can see that it is so obvious that that disrespect must be washed away and cannot be wished away before any, any other step can be taken, including the withdrawal of the charge. There is a greater issue. Are the courts to be used like tissue paper, blow your nose in it and throw it away? The courts are more than that. And therefore, we came prepared. They ambushed us with uh, this oral application uh, for withdrawal. There is no difference between withdrawal and nolly prosecution is the Attorney General that exercises the power. And one is baptismal name for the other. And the law, that is the Constitution, says before you withdraw, it must be seen to be acting in the public interest, in the interest of justice, and it should not be an abuse of court process. In my view, very humble view, when you have trammeled the order of bail of the court, disgraced a fellow brother agency into the world press by dragging one of their senior officials on the steps and throw him inside the waiting vehicle. And that issue is before the court. And all of a sudden, you think that issue can be avoided by merely withdrawing the charge and everybody will go and sleep and wait till next time when you probably shoot somebody. I'm sorry to say that our application is that any other step, including withdrawal, cannot be attended to until that temerity and disgrace shown to the court is dealt with. If the court says, well, let me put it in Yoruba, Mufaramo, let us go and uh, uh, continue to jolly with them. Oh, it's all well and good. But we are only after the integrity of the justice system that all of us... Yes, we are withdrawing the charges because of emerging facts that requires further investigation. So we are withdrawing pending further investigation, at, at the end of which we we'll probably come back with more charges, more counts. So there were, there were arguments in court as to um, whether the propriety and the right way to do that, whether it should have been put in writing or not. Can you give us a clarification? You know, you talked about section 107, 108, and the yes, 174 yes. of the Constitution. If you listen to our submissions in court, we distinguish section 107 from 108. While section 107 provides that the application shall be in writing, section 108 is writing is, is silent on the mode. It just gives the prosecutor the authority to apply to withdraw. And uh, our application was made portion to section 108. So, so what next then? Well, we await the ruling of the court. Um, another thing I wanted to clarify is that the defense has said that um, they've not had access to their client while he's been in custody of the um, DSS, and that the, the, the prosecution uh, is in disobedience of a court order. Is there anything you can tell us about that? On the first issue or issue of access, it's not true. He has, he has unfettered access to his lawyers, his relatives, his friends at all times. On the matter of disobedience, we are not in disobedience of the court order. Uh, when the court rendered its ruling, granting the defendant bail, it was in two legs. It was granted bail and to be reminded in the custody of the correctional service pending fulfillment of bail conditions. You will agree with me that there are administrative processes, protocols for handing over a detainee from one agency to the other. 
and that is what the the state services had to do and that was what occasioned the delay in transferring him and uh, uh, on the heels of that is the fact that he's also being investigated for other offenses and if 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 i may say this there is also another pending charge at the FCT High Court as we speak. So all this combined to slow down the process of complying with the orders of the court. There is a pending application of the federal government. What happens to that? Which at one? the last sitting last week. Yes, we once we withdraw the charge, everything goes with the charge. What's the nature of the charge at the, at the FCT High Court? And what's the nature of the charge that the prosecution is looking to bring? Are we finally to bring to where? So you, you say that you're withdrawing from here to bring to Yes, I, I, I don't want to speculate because it's going to be a product of investigation. So whatever investigation discloses will determine the charges that we're going to bring. Of course, uh, unlawful possession of firearms may be part of it and perhaps more. You asked about the charges at the FCI court conferring unlawful advantage. There are charges that borders on procurement offenses under the ICPC Act.